now it's time to take our page and turn it from just a piece of art into the storytelling medium known as comics. We're going to accomplish this by adding our word balloons. Now, if you listened to me in an earlier video and you left some space for this in your thumbnails, this is going to be a really simple process for you. There will be plenty of room to lay out all the balloons that you're going to need to use for all of the dialogue that you've written for your page. Now, there are a bunch of different types of word balloons. You don't have to take it literally, and you certainly don't have to use the most common kinds found in comics. Depending on your style, you might want to have borderless ones, you might want to have square ones, you might want to have ones that are like see-through or just a little bit uh, opaque. It doesn't matter. Whatever you think is going to fit best with the look of your book and the style of your story. When you're lettering, it's best to start with the text so you know what size and shape to make your balloon afterwards. So let's go ahead and try that out. Go down and select your text tool and open up the subtool so you can have a look and see your options. All right, right now it's set to text, and we're going to go down here and check out our text options. Now, before we get started with actually typing, let's take a second to talk about fonts. Unfortunately, you're going to be limited by whatever selection of fonts are already on your computer. And most standard computer fonts aren't going to be the best for lettering a comic. What you're going to want to do is go to a site like Blambot, for example, and download a font that's already been created for the specific purpose of lettering comics. I like Blambot because they have a ton of really well-made free and premium fonts. I've gone ahead and downloaded the font Anime Ace 2.0 BB from Blambot. It's a free font. I think it looks great, and it's going to fit really well with the tone of this comic. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, and then I'm going to start setting up the appropriate size to make sure it looks right on the page. About 14 is what I usually like to letter at, so we're going to leave it there and see what that looks like. What you do is you just take the cursor and you tap it on your screen, and it's going to give you a blinking cursor where you can start your text. OK, I think that size looks pretty good, so I think we're pretty safe. Now, one other thing you're going to want to do is make sure that your justify is down the center line because your text is probably going to be going into a circular-ish shaped balloon. If it's going to be a different shape, no, nah, you know what, I would still just leave it on center. If you're doing a caption, that's a different story. I would justify it to the left. But for the sake of balloons, all dialogue, let's just go ahead and justify it down the center so that it spreads out in an even and pleasing manner. Now that we've got that all set up and we have our blinking cursor, let's go ahead and type some dialogue. Remember, this is probably going in a circular shape, so try and keep it in a similar shape while you're typing out your sentences and make it look balanced and even so it fills the balloon properly. All right, that's an example of text that's been pretty well balanced. I think it's going to fit into the balloon pretty well. The top and bottom sentences match pretty well, and the middle sentences match pretty well as well, so it kind of creates an oval shape on its own. It's a little bit too close to her head, though, so let's pick it up with the Move tool scoot it up just a tiny bit so that we have a little bit more room and the balloon's not going to be crowding her head. All right, now let's add a balloon behind this text. Go back to your text tool, and then you have all these options for creating balloons. I like to use ellipse balloons myself, so I'm going to select that. Now you're going to want to make sure that your brush size, if you want a border on this, is enough that the border is actually going to show up. I have it set to 11. I think that looks pretty good. Again your personal preference, you can set it up however you like. There are also some options here where if you want to make it square or you want to make it a weird shape, like a polygon or whatever, you can go ahead and select that too, but I'm going to keep it to simple old ellipse. Now, to use this tool, it's just like dragging out a box or any other selection. Start in the corner, drag it down and out until it looks like it's surrounding the text in a pretty balanced manner, and then let go. Now, every balloon needs a tail, so let's go ahead and add one. Go to the balloon tail section, and you know, these tend to create tails that are pretty narrow, so I've turned mine all the way up to 50 just to get something that doesn't look too tiny. Uh, again, your personal preference, really, that's what this is all about. So in order to use the tail tool, you're going to first start by clicking somewhere inside of the balloon towards the bottom. I usually like to pick one side or the other. It looks kind of weird if things are coming out straight the center of the balloon. So I'm going to start on the left edge, click once, drag down to about halfway, click again, and then it kind of like pulls out to make a curve. And when you think you have the tip positioned about where you want it, make sure it's pointing at the character who you want to be speaking. That's very important. 
go ahead and hit enter, and then it connects it for you. That looks OK. If you don't like it, just hit undo and try it again until you're happy. I might even turn up the width just a little bit more. Let's see what 65 looks like. Oh, that's going to be much better. Click in the center, and then just hover it down until it's where you want it. Hit Enter. OK, I like that a lot more. I think that looks pretty good. Now you should have a completed word balloon with text and all. And repeat this process for the rest of your panels. Now we've completed the lettering phase. We've gone ahead and designed our balloons. We've laid out our text. We've got everything reading just the way we want it to. Now that you've finished your page, don't keep it to yourself. It's time to share it. That's the best part of comics. What else did you tell the story for? So one of the basic ways to get started is to share it on the web. It's really simple. Since you're working digitally, it's basically already ready to go. It's easiest if you save it as 72 DPI. There are tons of DPI options, but for web resolution, 72 is all you're going to need. So make sure you go ahead and turn your DPI down to 72. And that'll give you an appropriate file size to share on something like Twitter, Tumblr, WordPress, basically whatever. Everything likes a 72 DPI file. Go to Edit, Change Image Resolution, and reduce it to 72 DPI. I know we started off big, but when you share something on the web, oftentimes you need the smallest file possible, and 72 DPI is the perfect screen resolution. It's also going to make your file manageable for just about every website. Go ahead and hit OK. And depending on the size of your file, this might take a few seconds, so just let it do its thing. All right, now it's resized. It's a tiny little file ready to be shared on the web. You're going to go to File, Export Single Layer, you don't need to keep all your separate layers when you post this to the web. And you're going to use JPEG. JPEG is a great file format that's accepted pretty much everywhere. Find the place to save this. Name it something that you're going to remember. I'm going to call mine Comic Web. That way I know that it's a web-sized file. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit Save. It's going to bring up this little dialog box. Make sure your quality is set to 100. That way, your page will look just as good as it does on the screen here. As far as for illustration or for comic, it's really up to you. I usually just save for illustration. If you've used some sort of tone or whatever on your comic and you're a little nervous about it, go ahead and save for comic. But since I haven't and I have a pretty basic illustration, we're just going to use for illustration. If you want to play around with these settings later, by all means, explore as much as possible. Make sure your color is set to RGB. That is the kind of color that web displays at. If you're going to print it for whatever reason, use CMYK. But since we're setting this file up to be shared on the web, let's go ahead and stick to RGB. When you're all done with your settings, go ahead and hit OK. It's going to show you a little preview if everything checks out. Quality 100%. This is the size of your file. You can zoom in and check everything if you want, just to make sure nothing's looking weird. When you're done with that, hit OK again. And you're all set, and your file should be saved in the location that you set up. And there you go. Now you have your first page of comics. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? You've gone all the way through story layout and character concept and creation. You've laid out your page. You've penciled it. You've inked it. You've colored it. You've lettered it. And now it's time to share it. Some great places to start are Tumblr, your own blog if you have one. If you're a member of DeviantArt, go ahead and put it up on your DeviantArt page wherever you can so that as many people as possible can see your awesome work.